Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I'm doing a video I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Kubota gas versus the Kubota diesel. I was able to score 4500Z from a friend of mine, taped over his name, anyone on the internet, that's what that's for. But uh, this is the most frequently asked question on either like my channel or YouTube channels. If you read forums or groups, everyone asks Kubota gas versus diesel. Now, if you're buying a 4520, like I tell everyone on this channel, uh, the Ventrac dealers are great. Have them bring out one of each so you can sort of see them, compare them for yourself to know what's better for you. So far, I've done a lot of videos on the 4500Y. If you know, a lot of you guys have seen them, for, you, for those of you who have not, you can always go back and check them out. I've used the Tough Cut, uh, the 72 inch mower, the wide area mower, uh, fine cut flail, power rake, trencher, buckets, blades, everything. I like the diesel, it's been working out well for me, but you get 26% more horsepower with the 4500Z. So how do they really work comparison? Everyone's power is different. I still say you could put a Caterpillar C15 under the hood of one of these and someone's gonna complain it doesn't have enough power. So everyone's view on power is differently. So if you're in the market for a used 4500 and you're not exactly sure, hopefully this video will sort of show you the power difference and for everyone else sort of curious uh, to put them side by side. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about each engine. I'm going to start them up, let you listen to them, show them. I'm going to do a decibel test. Uh, some people say the gas is louder than the diesel. We're going to find out. I got an app on my phone. We're going to see at an idle what the decibel is and then I'm going to rev them up to full throttle and we'll see there. Now the 4500Z is a Kubota WG972GL. It's 32 and a half horsepower and it puts out 50.6 foot pounds of torque. The 4500Y is a three cylinder Kubota diesel. It's a D902, it's 25 horsepower and puts out 42 foot pounds of torque. We're gonna do a couple different tests with these. I'm gonna use the HQ680 Tough Cut and then I'm gonna use my MS720 mower deck. I would have liked to got some other attachments, flails and that kind of thing to do the test, but. I didn't really have a lot of time and it's so hard getting attachments and stuff right now. Uh, just with the shortage of everything, I can't even find any places to get things. So I got a map here I'm going to throw up. I got zone one and two. These have been areas that I have not cut all year long. I got zone three. This was cut right at the beginning, the first week of July. Zone four. This was cut the first week of August. Zone five is just some clover patches that have not been cut. And then I got zone six, which was a sweet corn patch that's been overtaken by foxtail. We're gonna do a little cutting there. And then everything else, the lower stuff would be zone seven. Uh, I set up some areas on the lawn. We're gonna do some passes there. I'm gonna try to do some time trials to sort of see which one cuts the fastest and let you guys hear the engines and see them. And hopefully this will be a comparison just to sort of show how much more underpowered the diesel is than the gas. So to be a fair comparison, both these machines are equipped with almost exactly the same options, except the Z model has a three point hitch, which really doesn't matter. But both machines are gonna be operating in weight transfer zero. I'm gonna have both of them operating in the high, uh, high range of the transaxles. And both machines will also be operating at full throttle 3600 RPMs while doing these tests. So, I want to make the tests as fair as possible uh, to sort of show, you know, each one in action. So let me go get set up and we'll get started.
All right, really quick, just an overview of what we're doing. I showed you in the picture. Uh, over there, zone one, that's just gonna be, I'm gonna call a hog and bog. I'm gonna try to just take a pass or two with each machine, um, hog into it. I'm not gonna time nothing, just to sort of see from an operator's point of view. And then I'm gonna put it on the tripod and let you guys see from a bystander's point of view. Uh, listen to the tractor, hear it, see it, how it's cutting in the speed. And then I got each zone laid out down through here with lines. Uh, as you can see, got the tractors lined up. Um, each section, it's roughly 95 feet from line to line. 85 feet of cutting is it's just how it worked out. I wanted to do 100 feet, but since the property's on an angle this way, it, I could do each one of them 85 feet. So with the lines, it's, it's roughly 95 feet. I'm going to start the counter. The timer as soon as the front wheels hit these lines and then when the front wheels hit the lines on the other side i'm going to end it and the whole point of this is i'm going to try to take each machine and push them to their limits to where not when it bogs down and almost stalls but at a comfortable pace of what you normally would mowing so i'm going to start hitting it and if the rpm start to drop or i can hear the engine you know start to struggle just how you'd normally cut, not trying to really bog anything down or nothing like that. I just want to see them at their natural state um, cutting to see which one does it quicker, easier, and, and bogs down the most. So I got all these different zones set up. I like to show you in the pictures. The growths are all different and there's all different kinds of weeds. To sort of give you guys an idea, um, cutting situations, which engine would work best for your preferences. So. I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up here and get these tractors fired up and we're going to start rolling.
All right, looking over the totals here uh, for the weeds, 4,500Y on the left and the 4,500Z on the right. Adding up all the totals for the times, uh, we got a time for the diesel of 186 and the gas at 207.1. I really wasn't expecting these results, even while doing these tests while, you know, being on the machines, the, the diesel engine would would start to lug a little more, but it must be the torque of the diesel that, that put it in ahead now. I wasn't operating one machine any differently than the other. I was trying to make this as fair as a test I possibly can. And uh, these are just the numbers that came out on it. So I was I was really shocked. I wasn't expecting it to swing this way, but it really looks like the diesel isn't so underpowered after all. Um, we'll go over to the totals here for grass, 4,500Y on the left, the Z on the right. Uh, 58.6 for the total of the tests I did for the diesel and 57.9 for the gas. So on the grass test, they were pretty much neck and neck. Um, I could have started or stopped the clock, you know, a second off on each one. So even while mowing, the the diesel on the flatland kept right up with the gas guys. And like I said, I, I really wasn't expecting the test to turn out like this. Uh, these are the numbers that I got. Um, I'm going to try to do maybe some hillside tests with this now after seeing this to to sort of get an idea on hills if it, if it really lugs any different. All right, I hope this video helped anyone with the decision, maybe if they're looking at a used Ventrac 4500, and this comparison would show you maybe you need the Kubota gas, the diesel isn't enough for you. Uh, after looking at everything now, the Kubota diesel did lag a little bit on the really tall stuff at first when I cut it, but on the tractor's defense, if I was really cutting that tall and thick of material, I would lift up on the attachment and give it more room to discharge the material out from underneath it, or I would just take half a cut instead of a full cut. I generally don't cut nothing that tall, but if I were, that's what I would do. Doing a comparison test for horsepower, though, I wanted to put them both at the same and let you guys see which one did what and how it operated. It was really nice getting off one machine and right on the other after making a couple test passes because it could really give me the view of really the power difference of the gas versus the diesel. That Kubota gas has a really good sound. I really like it. It's got a deep sound to it. It sounds good. It's a very smooth running engine. The only complaint I have with the Z, and this is common, you've heard this before, is it definitely goes through fuel quicker. But with 26% more power, almost eight horsepower difference. Um, more horsepower, more fuel. That's just how it goes. The more power, the more fuel it's gonna go through. At the end of the day, if I were to trade my 4500 in on a brand new 4520, uh, the engine that I would probably choose would be the diesel. I would, I would definitely go with the diesel again. And it's not that I dislike the gas, I love the gas, I just don't need the extra horsepower. Um, for everything that I've done around here, the diesel has had plenty of power for me. Like I said, if you're cutting extreme hills or if you have a business and you're going to be power raking extreme conditions daily or cutting very, very tall weeds or you're in a hurry, the gas is probably your better option to go. But for flatlanders, general things, I don't find the diesel really that underpowered. I think it does good. Uh, one more thing I will add before I end this video. After mowing this year, I have noticed with the diesel is if I'm mowing and I hit some really tall grass and I'm doing six and a half, seven mile an hour, say, and the diesel starts to drop RPMs, you might lose RPMs, but the torque of the diesel, it just keeps working. Um, I don't even slow up anymore. I just continue going where I'm going. And then when I get out of the thick stuff, the tractor just picks right back up like it, it never skips a beat. So the torque of the diesel, when you start to bog it down, it really does work. Um, if you guys have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see, please go ahead and comment below. As always, thanks for watching.